Hey everybody, my name is Lowell and welcome to the channel. So we're jumping back into the Reacher. Not the Reacher, just Reacher. Um, this is going to be episode two. This one is called First Dance. So let's jump in. Let's have a look at this one. The Reacher. What a moron. The so first episode we did was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. He's a big boy, I tell you what. Where do you think you're going? Reacher! Follow him. Make sure he doesn't ruin our case. Why me? Outside the morgue, he actually listened to you. And what if he doesn't now? Shoot him. Shoot him, okay. Yeah, he's not gonna see that sneaking up behind him. Jeez. Like, where the hell did he go? Where the hell did he go? Shit! <laughs> what the hell? I could have hit you. I don't need a babysitter, and I don't need you screwing up my investigation. So stand down and let me do my job, because I'm very good at it. If you were very good at it, you wouldn't have been trying to follow a man on foot in a police car. I can save the shoe leather and get in the damn car. Officer Conklin, uh, Mr. Reacher, please come in. Reacher, my husband told me that you looked out for him in that office. Is she of Smallville? She please, looks like, um, uh, what was her name on Smallville? Lana? Can you imagine? Paul, criminal? <laughs> Man's never so much as jaywalked. I assume that's why you're here with bank stuff. No. My brother was murdered. Dear God, I. I don't I'll know just launch right into it, eh? That's the man they found by the highway. He was. And he had your husband's telephone number on him. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Why? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Well, is it 8.30 already? I'm sorry, but I've got to get these two to bed. Girls, say hi to Officer Conklin and Mr. Reacher. Hello, Hello Mr. Conklin. Hello, Mr. Reacher. Hello, Mr. Conklin. It's just Reacher. Tally's growing like a weed. Yeah, I know. She's the one with the glasses. Can you believe she's a year younger than Lucy? Yeah, I use your restroom. Okay, he's on to something. He's thinking. He's thinking. What's he thinking? Some minute particle that he's found. Oh no, it's a, a burr? We've taken up enough of your time. Have a nice evening, Roscoe. Two things. One, Happy. she said Tally is the one in the glasses. Glasses is the main difference between the girls. Everything else was a matter of degree. Taller, shorter, but glasses was absolute. One wears them, one doesn't. And? Right before I was attacked in prison, a guy pointed at me and said to him, I'd taken a guy's glasses. Why? Because he wasn't a nice man. I still had him on when these cons came <clears> at me. Their instructions were clearly to find the new boys and take out the one in glasses. Hubble's have been smashed. He was a target, not me. Hubble's on the runner. They've already got him. Okay. You said there were two things. Some kind of seed. Why would a banker have him on his dress shoes? You went in his closet. No, mudroom. It's an agrimony burr. They grow on tall grass all around here. We call them hitchhikers because they stick on you and they go for a ride. This is Kogon grass. Out on my uncle's farm. It doesn't produce burrs. Still some reason they were on his laces. They'll pick up hitchhikers in bank hallways. I told Finley the shooter was someone who knew firearms well, but it was more than that. The killer was a skilled marksman. The shooter came through here, waiting for Joe. Knew he was coming. Did he have a meeting? This is where he hid. Cigarette butts. So why was he waiting for him? He enjoyed it. The shooter wanted to be close. Maybe it was personal. If someone takes your life, it's always personal. Can't get much more personal than that. 
Do you have a family? What do you do for a living? Small talk to see if I say something to help your investigation. I'm being nice to a guy who just lost his brother, but, you know, now that you brought it up, you might as well answer my questions. In order, when we were kids, no family. Last time we spoke, he was working at Homeland Security. That's interesting. You think that this might have been connected to his job? Homeland's a big umbrella. Terrorism, drugs, guns, border crimes. What department was your brother in? Don't know. We hadn't spoken in a while. Oh, God. Hey, mister, why don't you come here? We want to talk to you. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't want any hey, of come this. come here. Come we on, kids. We just want to talk to you. Heard you got arrested for murder. What kind of bullshit you bring into our town? Let me guess. Rich guy in a fancy pickup put a 50 in each of your pockets to take care of him? Honored. All right. Well, this is the wrong day to ask me to humor your bullshit. Hey. We're talking to you. Bad man. mistake, buddy old pal. <clears throat> oh, Graham, you idiot. You're about to get your ass kicked. I'm just gonna break the hands of three drunk kids. <laughs> There's four of us here. One of you's gotta drive to the hospital. Ooh. Oh! I know where the hospital is. <laughs> comes by your house and turn the lights off that's never good oh that is definitely not good oh no oh oh the little puppy's got no food got no water oh, buddy. okay Good boy. Hey. There you go. Hey, can I help you? No. Nope. Just giving your dog some water. I must have knocked the bowl over because I gave him water this morning. Yeah, no. Nah. Oh, you didn't? This bowl was bone dry. You call him me a liar? Yep. Yes. I suggest you leave my property. Good boy. I can't talk right now. There's been another murder. Police Chief Morrison. For the record, I didn't do it. I know. Because you staked me out all night? Yep. What is he doing here? You told me keep an eye on him. I keep an eye on him. Look, there he is. Crime scene is worse than anything I ever saw in Boston. And I saw things in Boston. Was he nailed to a wall? How did you know that? Hey. How the hell, wait, how the hell did you know that? that that's a fairly unique way to kill somebody. Unless it's um, cartel, I guess. Bloody footprints down the hallway. That's the question, Mr. Like this one. How'd you know about the nails? Even a mob grave or it doesn't travel that fast. They wore rubber overshoes and gloves. Latex. Like whoever killed my brother. What makes you say that? Well, three people killed my brother. At least four to do that to a guy Morrison size. No more games. How do you know what you know? The people Hubble worked for said they'd nail him to a wall and cut his balls off if he caused problems. You said Hubble didn't tell you anything in jail. I lied. My brother didn't trust more grave cops enough to tell you he was tracking something down here. Why should I? Ever think your brother didn't reach out to the cops because he couldn't reach out to the cops? Maybe he was dirty. Think Maybe real hard before you finish that sentence. It'll determine how well your jaw works the rest of your life. Joe was clean. <laughs> I like that modern art piece hanging inside. So you're saying that Morrison was working with the same killers Hubble was mixed up with. That or we just saw a big fat coincidence nailed to the wall. 
What I want to know is who else in Margrave PD's in on it. Stevenson seems suspicious, and Baker wouldn't go into the bathroom with me at the station house. A bathroom with a window in it. I was a murder suspect. Baker wasn't concerned because he knew you didn't do it, which means he knows who did. Want to tell me who else on my team is Cricket? Sure. Roscoe checks out because she dug in to get me out of prison. But you're hiding something. Tell me, why does a black cop from Boston with a 20-year pension come work in a southern backwater town in the middle of nowhere? You next in line for Morrison's job? For your information, Mayor Teal didn't promote Finley. He just appointed himself acting chief. Since when? This morning. Came here to tell you. Whoever's running this had Morrison under his thumb. No one sits in the chief's chair unless they're under it, too. They skipped you to get to Teal. So I guess that means he's dirty and you're okay. And nothing means more to me than your vote of confidence. <laughs> Outside investigators of said whoever does. did this in a hiding. We'll let them think they've got it under control for now. There's no we here. But the way they were killed sent a message to their organization. Don't screw up and don't cross us. You two think you can go it alone? You can't go it alone. There's only we here. You don't see that? I'll find whoever killed Joe on my own. I'll stay here since I'm armed. You go find Finley. They'll know what to do with them, but they need some kind of protection. I need your car. And we will punish them to the fullest extent of the law. If they're killing cops in their own homes, then what chance do any of us got? A damn good chance, because as of today, per the powers given to me by the town charter, I have appointed myself chief of police. But what the hell do you know about law enforcement? That's right. We need us a real police chief and a real chief detective, too. I think he's talking about you. All due respect. But what does some Yankee cop know about Margrave? We ain't seen a murder in 20 years, and now there's four. Four in two days. Do we have a serial killer in Margrave or not? These killings are not related. Oh, what about that animal you rested out on the diner? I think she's talking about you. He comes to town and people just start dying? I know you're all scared. But Mr. Reacher has a rock-solid alibi. And for those of you who don't know, one of the victims was Mr. Reacher's brother, Joseph. So he has as much invested in finding these murderers as any one of us here. I have faith in our police force. I have faith in Chief Detective Finley. I have faith in our new chief of police, Mayor Teal. And I promise I will provide whatever funds, whatever resources to find whomever is responsible for these heinous acts. Mayor Teal. A word? Chief Teal now, Captain. Of course, my mistake. I just want to let you know that I'm going to start cross-referencing forensics from both murder sites too. Establish pattern. Pattern? What the hell has Morrison and his wife got to do with an out-of-towner and some fella he was probably diddling under an overpass? That's what I want to find out. These killings are not related. Over the oh course of his God. career, Morrison took countless criminals out of circulation, combed the archives, tracked down the biggest scumbags he ever arrested, who've since been released or paroled, pardoned, everything in between. That's how you're going to find his killer. She was trying to frame the Morrison hit as a revenge killing. Just sent me off to chase my tail. Told you he's dirty. I'm prone to agree, but incompetence can look like malevolence, and it's a whole lot more common. You know who's not incompetent? Kleiner. You're one of those conspiracy nuts. Guys with the kind of money and power Kleiner wields are rarely angels. We need to look into them. If you want this town to hate you more than it already does, this starts smearing Kleiner, and I'm not going to be able to look into anyone except the losers in Morrison's old case files. Uh and the next one has to do with Hubble's wife and kids. They need protection, even if Hubble's already dead. These guys get antsy, think Charlie has even a 1% chance of knowing anything. I get it. My FBI buddy, I wanted to reach out to her earlier. Name's Picard, Atlanta field office. I'll call you when it's set up. My condolences for your brother. Tragedy when a person is struck down in his prime like that. But my hand to God, we'll find the killer. We'd be happy to keep you updated on the investigation. Just leave your contact information with the department before you head out. I'm not leaving. Oh. It was my understanding you were just passing through. You understood wrong. I figured I'd stick around a while. Margrave's such a nice town. Used to be. 
You looking for payback? Payback? Justice? Vengeance? Looking for the whole gang. You might not be the only one. Meaning? Meaning you wouldn't happen to have a couple of Spanish-speaking amigos in town, would you? No. Makes sense. Because the two fellas come by my shop asking about you. It didn't seem all that friendly. Is he a good person? I think so. We don't really have the luxury of certainty right now, but bad things are happening, and Reacher can help us. Get some food together. Pack your bags for kids. Where are we going? Got a call from Finley. FBI agent named Picard is on his way. He's taking you into protective custody. Picard will keep you safe. That's what your husband would have wanted. We have to assume Paul's dead. They tried to kill him in prison. They killed Morrison and his wife. Your husband's gone missing, so they most likely killed him, too. There'll be time to grieve later. You have to think about your kids. Oh. Is that the Spanish? That looks like it. We're on the move. It's not safe anymore. Let's go. I'm not ready. Let's go now. Girls! Who cares? Get the kids. Let's go. Lisa, come get your backpack. Oh my god, people are so worried about things. Just go. Just go. Hey, hey, hey. Easy. I'm Picard. Mind putting the cannon down? Take that. Got it. Okay. This is off the books. To get a family into an actual protection program would take time and red tape. Finley said he can't get the FBI officially involved yet, so I'm going to take a few personal days, watch the family myself. Bottom line, do not let this bite me in the ass. We are talking about my career here. Finley and I are tight. We ain't that tight. We won't let you get burned. Better not. I'm going to go see that guard, Spivey, at Warburton. Whoever paid him to set up Hubble to be killed is who's running this thing. Spivey's a key. He won't tell you anything. Oh, you will. Depends on how I ask. <laughs> Tanner Spivey, Chief Detective Finley, Margrave PD, calling on account of Jack Reacher. Yeah, well, he's pissed. Says he got tuned up pretty good while under your roof, and now he's suing. Well, he was your prisoner, and I'm not losing my job over this. Is there somewhere we can meet up, get our story straight before lawyers start sniffing around? Hey, Spivey. Man, look who it is. <laughs> you know, I never met Detective Finley. But I heard all about him. And you sure as hell don't sound like a black man from Boston on phone. You should have let those boys kill you in the prison. It would have been a lot Where less painful. Adios. No. It's too small. It'll be uncomfortable. Whatever it is, it means that when I make my move, you're going to hesitate. And you guys know what Cato said about hesitation, right? He who hesitates. <laughs> oh! Ah! Oh, here we go. The old butterfly knife. to question them maybe next time don't pull something like this by yourself i said you could work with us it's not my fault spivey didn't buy it or goons probably military or ex-military south american how could you know that because if they weren't i would have killed them within 10 seconds how'd you know they were south american military 
Spoke Spanish, had Glock 17s, and the technique one guy used to headbutt me was from a martial art called Ricey. Hardly anyone uses except branches of South American Special Forces. Plus, if they weren't, I would have killed him within 10 seconds. Turns out Joe was working for the Secret Services Division of Homeland. Doing what? No one could or would give me any answers, but... Secret Service covers everything from mail fraud to protecting the president to child exploitation. Your brother could have been involved in almost anything. Counterfeiting? Hubble specialized in currency management. It may be, but money's at the root of every crime there is. Drugs, guns, human trafficking, all rotates around cash. I'm gonna find his house and search it. Prison guard's home address won't be public, and county offices won't be open till morning. I'll chase it down then and handle it myself. You, go get some rest. There's a roadhouse just across the border in Alabama. Nobody knows you there. Cold beer, hot music, but you gotta behave. Thanks. It's not a twist off. Show off. I don't dance. You're telling me that your mama never taught her sons how to dance. I ain't full for it. Come on, keep professional. Look at this. Oh. Hey, take a beat, champ. We're far from Margrave. Not far enough. I say go, you duck. Jeez, Mike. What's going on? Road east to the highway's footed. No one's getting through tonight. Is there a hotel near here? Oh, well, okay. So that was, um, innocent enough, I guess. I got a sampling from the vending machine. Wow. You always eat this well? My parents died when I was a kid, but I had oh. gray. Gray? I had Finley's job, or Finley. Who was my parents' best friend. <laughs> always looked out for me, kind of like a second dad. Taught me everything I know about being a cop. He was depressed a lot, never married, no kids, drank. Hung himself from the rafters in his garage about a year ago. So he came in last night in dirty feet. All clear. Clear. When they came in, they tracked through the flower bed. Rubber overshoes. They're gonna kill me? Oh. Looks dang. like they plan on coming back. I'm really gonna need a gun. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, that was so good. I didn't realize that was going to be the end there. Oh, my God. That was such a good, good show. So it's heating up. It's heating up. Man, when you kill the police chief, you got some real issues in that town. I mean, as I said, they've had four murders in two days. Um, and they haven't had a murder since for 20 years. That, that's a big jump in murders. That's a huge jump in murder. So, oh, we're going to have to see what happens next. So, we're going to have to see if they can track down who's doing these murders, these four blokes in the rubber suits. So, um, come back next episode when we hopefully find out a little bit more what's going on in this town. A tiny, sleepy little town. 
It's got a lot going on. It's got a lot going on we have to discover. So, guys, thank you very much for being here. Remember, if you did enjoy it, you can leave a message here as well too. So, But in the meantime, make sure you stay safe, and I'll definitely see you in the next reaction video. Did you enjoy that video? Why not watch another one?